back in season two when I played with them for the first time. I was still going to school by then and it was like really unexpected that I would get the opportunity to play with them. But I didn't take it like super duper serious. Uh, but once they invited me to go down to the house, it was like a very good feeling for me uh, because I felt like I could leave school behind and take the chance of going there and like meshing well with the guys and just being a good player in general. He was a really talented player. He was able to put a good show and be able to actually win against the best players in the world at that time. He was basically the one that helped the structure and the team to jump from an average team to a really good team that was able to compete against the best teams in the world. An applause is in order for these guys. Sprinkle champions once again. It went really well for us. We won the spring speed and then we didn't practice or work hard enough. For the first time, we actually didn't manage to win the summer split. Fanatic are dethroned as the champions of Europe. That's where we started to fall down. When we didn't win summer splits against Elements, we just fell apart. We had a very hard time like dealing with the fact that we weren't doing well. Afterwards, we had a conversation as five, and then people wanted to do their own things, and then I got really kind of stressed out. At that time, with the information I had, it just felt very, very scary for me to go into something new as the new Fnatic lineup or the new Origin lineup. So, Element just felt like a very, very natural choice for me. Here comes Frederick. He stole it. Frederick comes up with a steal, gives it over to Whirlup and Rydal, and Elements are denied the Baron. What is going on for Elements? They look like they had the game all game long. There's a Nexus turret going down. Elements are just disconnected from this game. And who would have guessed that? To looking so good on paper. Things didn't go as they, they were planned to be. I think that's just because sometimes things just don't work out. You know, it doesn't have to be someone being a major problem or anything. It just sometimes the puzzle doesn't go together. Five wins, nine losses, and out of playoff positions. We were being put in a very tough spot in Elements. We were like fighting for relegations, and we were on the edge of like having to work with each other, even if it didn't work. You know, like we were forced to do that because else we would be relegated. At this point, I realized that spending like 16 hours every day playing the game is not gonna actually help me win a championship or be in the best team or to be the best player because after all it's a team game you know I kind of forgot that some somewhere along the line I just forgot that it's a team game and I can't play by myself so at that point I kind of realized that I have to play less and spend more time like actually mashing well with the team I learned so many valuable things that I wouldn't have learned otherwise I've definitely grown as a as a person I think and then Fnatic offered me to come back again and I felt like it was just very natural once again just to come back home, you know. Uh, even if there were new players, I still have one of my old, like older teammates, Yellowstar, has always been there for me in my whole career. Everyone agreed that it would be an improvement to the team, so it was a team decision and it was not only my call. Even though I've always wanted to play with him because it was the, the most consistent and I know what he's able to do. We like just match really well as persons and we have kind of the same goals in the game and the same idea on how to play the game. So just always felt like we we could work together without even talking. He's still the support that I had the biggest success with and I had the easiest time working with and I think that's just coming down to us work being so similar in a way. <laughs> we've been a really good bot lane, so we've already had the synergy, whether in real life or in game. Taking requests back makes us Thing that we don't only want to be the best in Europe, we really want to be the best in the world. I feel a lot of pressure because they were a number one team and therefore I'm working really hard to match well with the team and also still be the best player in my role and get the job done pretty much. This investment in me is like a long-term decision for them as well and I'm gonna work really hard. Like I just want to make them, make them feel that I was worth the risk. Absolutely fantastic piece about Reckless. He's one of the few players in Europe that 
everybody's been following since before he joined the LCS. He was too young to compete. Everybody knew him. He's bounced between multiple teams. And I think you know Reckless better than most, considering you've been around even longer than this young guy has. But it's good to hear him and his personal opinion saying he's grown, he's learned. It's not only about him, it's about the team. I think it's good that he finally gets a chance to uh, share his side of the story. He doesn't usually strike me as a person who likes to go you know, to social media, share his insight, and needs his time to learn and adapt. And, uh, he's very young. He started esports so, so young, and he, he matured a lot over the time. And let's not just forget, he's a fantastic player in addition to that. It was really fun laning with him. Uh, sadly, I was too heavy. That's why I'm here. But a uh, fantastic player. Let's see how he does with one of the best, if not the best support in Europe. Uh, Yellowstar. Well, we're about to find out. Yellowstar, of course, captaining Fnatic, and that will bring us to the first of two Fnatic matchups against SK Gaming in the summer split. And this is going to be huge because both of these teams have changed their respective AD carries. Fnatic going back to Reckless, SK going back to Candy Panda. Mm -hmm. But the results on day one could not have been further apart. It appears to have been near opposites in terms of how they showed up yesterday. Yeah, but we've made a mistake earlier today, judging on day one. And then uh, misjudging some teams there, Trevor. So let's see how that plays out. But yes, SK looked weak, in my opinion. And Fnatic, they looked like a stronger version of themselves. Very calculated and meticulous. And I want to see if they continue that trend and stay the number one team in Europe. Well, we'll find out. Let's take a look at that Fnatic roster to kick us off in the next game today. It is, of course, Hooney in the top lane, Rain over in the jungle, Febov in mid, Reckless, the man we just watched the video on as the AD carry, Yellow Star supporting with Daylor, the coach. Um, one thing that really stands out about yesterday's game is just how coordinated Fnatic looked. One of the tower dives very early on in the game in this top lane is just so beautifully played, Crepo. Yeah, you don't even have to say too much. Just watch where the tower goes. Every shot, Reckless goes out. Tower resets, hold, hold, hold. Minions, minions, minions. All right, Tank takes it. Tank takes one more shot. Tank takes one more shot, taps out. And it's just, it, it's interesting because we know that there's multiple languages in the team. We know that there's, you know, they're still learning between themselves. But this is, this is game sense. You don't have to talk to do this. You know that you want, the priority has to be on tanks. So you want to hold. And yes, stop and go, that's easy to communicate. But to execute it, in theory, it's all nice. When we were watching this, of course you have to do that, Trevor. Yeah. But then it gets rough once you get in the game. I've screwed up a tower dive in my, my career, maybe more than one. And it's, it's really, really rough to execute. And uh, the one thing I want to highlight, though, at the same clip, Callista was farming in the bot lane. Freeze didn't work out. Not a fan. Just want to reiterate that. Okay. Stop freezing lanes. Stop freezing lanes, according to Crepo. The other two people that stood out was, of course, Hooney and Rainover. Hooney not getting the usual amount of farm that he does, but Rainover, 100% kill participation. Hooney had the flashy NAR ultimates, but in my opinion, Hooney was the MVP of that game. Just everywhere on the map, sticking to Unicorns of Love like glue. Yeah, they, they, they basically carried so hard that, that Reckless didn't even have to do much. He just did his, well, his duties, what was required of him. Yep. Sit in the back, do some damage, try some arrows, little improvement on accuracy uh, possible there, but he has the room to improve because Fnatic just paves the way for him. He has a solid jungler and a solid top laner, and I, I'm a big fan of Rainover because he's what I call a really good tempo jungler. He keeps up the pace, always knows what to do, thinks two steps ahead, and it just shows why Fnatic is just so good at what they do. They always have something ready. Well, our catchphrase of the week is, of course, the tempo teams. Let's take a look if SK can find some tempo. Their roster coming into today's game will be Freddy up top, Sven in the jungle, Fox in the mid lane, Candy Panda in the AD carry role with in-rated support, and, of course, their coach, the sports psychologist, Material Boy. Individually, I think the team really underperformed. They seemed to struggle. They didn't seem to get really where we expect them to be. Uh, the one person I can't really fault for yesterday is Sven screen. He got invaded out and couldn't really stop it. Dodged some nice bindings, really tried to make some plays, but just couldn't because they were behind. But then at the same time, if we're, uh, if we're going to take a look at the 2v2 bot lanes, in my opinion, Reckless and Yellowstar now are stronger 2v2 than in Raiden and Candy Panda. However, is that going to prompt a swap from SK? And we've seen that their lane swap style was very linear at the same time. Fnatic is kind of better at lane swaps too. What is SK going to do to get out of this? Are we going to see some cheese or just a normal play and hope to outplay? What is SK going to bring to the table? Because they've said, we want to go back to what worked. Is it going to work? Well, we'll have to find out. Stress had a great line yesterday. The SK of old does not work in the Europe of new. And at least in the one game we've seen, it didn't work out. Remember, of course, Candy Panda replacing Forgiven in that AD carry role. Down a significant amount of CS. He's 26 CS behind at 10 minutes. In contrast, Gambit, uh, forgiven playing for Gambit, he was actually 17 CS up. So yesterday, it, today yeah, was in even. yesterday's games, yeah. today was even. Let's see if Candy can pick up the tempo in today's.